welcome to VI Voices, where we are once again ready to enlighten you and join you this evening. Well, missing, as you can see, is Amir Henderson, but here we have some other members of the team, uh, Boyd McFarlane and Clint Ferris. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. And of course, we are starting off as usual. We have two candidates coming up on this particular show. We have Percival Tahima Edwards as well as... I think Irvin Julian was also scheduled to be on our show. He was um, scheduled, but he may not be here. He today. may not be here. I haven't okay. seen him as a No yet. problem. We'll go with the flow. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, as always, we'll start off with our hot topics. Mm, definitely. So guys... What, uh, what's on our mind? Well, we were talking uh, earlier, uh, actually, on our last show, but I think it's worth picking it up in terms of the leadership that we're looking for, you know, as we go moving into the 30th legislature, as you all know. And we have been hopefully enlightening the listening audience and the viewing audience as it relates to not voting by popularity, but really looking into the criteria and what each of these candidates have and really doing your homework. I know you've discussed your uh, checklist, I've discussed mine, you have as well. And we want leadership. We want true, strong, sound leadership. What do you think, or what's your thoughts on you know, the candidates we are buzzing around or our expectations for leadership in the 30th legislature? Let, let well, before we were speaking about character, and I believe that in order for you to develop that character and that force and that love and that passion that's necessary to lead the Virgin Islands out of the, uh, the current crisis that is, you need to have some kind of understanding and knowledge of who you are and who you represent. Right. If you don't do that, you can continue to be self-serving, just like the majority of politicians that we've had for the last 29 legislatures for the last 58 years. But boy, don't you think they go in there with the well and good I do. I Not do. to be self-serving. I think everybody, because if you listen to the candidates, most of them, if not all, sound so genuine. It's like, okay, who do I choose? How do I go about, you know? It seems to me that we have to have a way that we select these candidates in such a way that the end result is reflective of our intelligence as a working populist. What do you think, sir? And, and you're right, because at times, Natalie, I think we we put people up on, on pedestals mm -hmm. and we because we see the advance a certain agenda at times mm -hmm. we think that agenda is all what they're about but at mm -hmm. times dollars may be attached to it right. and there may be something else that's attached to it and we don't realize that mm -hmm. and so so don't just look at the agenda mm -hmm. really look at who they are right. outside right. of that uh, arena right. what sort of a employee are they or what sort of a supervisor what sort of a person? What do their friends say about them? What the, org the people them who they happen to belong to these organizations with? Do they? How do they interact with them? So you can really get a gauge from that. And we are small enough community mm -hmm. that we know somebody that know these people exactly. who are running exactly. to let them have it. At times, listen to the bathroom gossip because the bathroom gossip says a lot. The barbershop gossip. The right, I, I agree. I agree with you, and I think we should look for those type of people. We should look for people. The Bible says it the best. It says um, you're gonna be judged by the manner in which you treat the least among you, mm -hmm. and that's very essential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once they develop itself and they have some kind of identity and know who they're dealing with and know who they are, that is gonna be that's gonna be the force of the impetus for them to do what's in the best interest of the people. And I firmly believe that if we don't select people that's doing that then forget it. I mean, people will come here week after week after week and talk about the plan, about what the plan to do, they're bringing in this business, that mm -hmm. business, they're going to generate that. Okay, let's say for instance, that's a good thing. And I'm not anti-development. Mm -hmm. Anti-development is good. But you bring in the developers and you bring in big corporations, mm -hmm. what's going to end up happening? They're going to bring in their own people to run it. And we're going to just have many oppositions, the positions that are in and not um decision-making um, positions or anything that makes a difference. Are you talking about Putting leaders or people in there who see the need for us to develop the people at the Virgin Islands. And when I say the people at the Virgin Islands, again, I'm talking about that 80%. My people, black people is who I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. People who, we're a conquered people, and unless we address those issues, I don't think that is going to be resolved. And you know, as I listen to you, because you know, we've had lots of different times when uh, investors are brought in, and we have to look carefully at the selection of those investors, the ulterior motives behind selections and like you said you know is anybody getting paid off for this or is this really for moving forward our people we could just look in the last 10 years critical, you know. and that's very it. critical but it's, and that's the challenge we have because our leaders 
are the ones who keep saying they go beyond the shores of the Virgin Islands exactly. and seek out these deals and then bring these investors in. Look at that deal the other day with these sports complex. complex. Thank you. That. No, 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 no. How, how could that even happen in the first place? And that's it. And who called them out on it? Imagine. But, but think about it. They were called out by the, the, the people who on a radio station, people who went out and exercised due diligence by what they went on the internet and you're telling me we are paying people eighty five thousand dollars one hundred and fifty thousand and they can exercise that same level of due diligence and, and go on. no that's just sitting in front of a computer for 20 minutes putting in a google search and everything pops up so you see that's the challenge right there so leadership we have to look at our leadership at times leadership is more than just where you're born the color of your skin who your what your family's name leadership comes down to again my boy said how do you treat the least among us how do you really value the virgin island is virgin island just something you you wear during festival time during food fair time i the virgin island something here in your heart and something you're passionate about 24 7 365 and you know what I couldn't have said that better, but as you said that, it brought me right back to thinking about, for example, when the senators voted on the 8% cut. The least among us, to a certain extent, were severely affected by that. And we can't have short memories when mm. it comes to looking at that. I mean, the senators who voted probably had all the justifications in the world that they had as to why they just... And some of them, the incumbents have been here, and we heard them, what yes, they had to say in terms of justifying it. But at the end of the day, was that really in the best interest of the people of the Virgin Islands, particularly here on St. Croix, when we in a depressed economy, somebody said earlier about a crisis, but it looked like we've been in operating in crisis mode for the longest while. I, I don't think it was the best interest, because even look at this. Hovensa now says it shutters its doors. And Hovensa mm -hmm. now has 10 years left on their agreement, and mm -hmm. they, they want us to go back again and revisit that deal mm -hmm. and redress it. Now, where, where was the foresight to actually go and visit all of these other contracts first and say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. we need to ask Diageo to put some back in the pot, mm -hmm. ask Scrooge and Ron, sure. Hovenza. Sure. Put some back in the pot. Sure. Yeah. They haven't sure. put anything in the pot at in all. Okay. What is the point of the pot? For Adija? You see? That's and, foolishness. You see, and you're right. And you're right. And so who made that deal? Our what leaders again. Who, okay. who are the negotiators? Our leaders That's made that deal. Who benefit? Not, again, not us as a community. Mm -hmm. Because think about it is, People drinking rum all over the United States of America because and other communities have taxed rum heavy, heavily and are benefited. And we are worse off and we are actually producing the rum and subsidizing the rum. And we are not reaping the benefits, benefits. from having two major rum producers on our island at right. this present time. So what's the sense? Why, why do we even do it in the first place? I, I don't know. And that brings us right back again to being open-minded at looking at our candidates with these innovative ideas ideas that's really going to propel us forward ideas that's going to our infrastructure is so bad it almost makes us seem like if we live in a third world country that brings me back to thinking about the economy we are not producers of anything we don't produce we anything we do not produce we have luck we have do is coming consume. on why you said that why. listen we have a farmer coming on tonight so that's that's a good way for us to to, 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 to roll into that but it's true we we produce absolutely nothing right. we're not self, we can't self-sustain ourselves you know if there's a disaster or something was to happen we live on an 84 square mile island what would how would we survive and you see and that's no exports can't come in here right. no shipments what do we do and this is the 20 this is 2012 and i can remember then governor rise lester snyder mm -hmm. back when he ran and I think that was 94, somewhere yeah. between 94, 98. Yep. He put that on the table about moving agriculture to the forefront, mm -hmm. having a canning plant, manufacture plant. All of those ideas were there. And look at that. We're now 18 years after his administration. And nothing, we're nothing still happened. languishing right here saying, let's move from potential to where we actually produce it. What well, now are we going to move on to that phase? That, well, the leaders are not creative, and they're not creative because they don't have the best interests of the people at heart, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. So without vision, the people can perish, and that's what we're seeing currently. Yeah. It's really hard times we live in. I, as a matter of fact, the fittest of the fit is who will survive. That's kind of what we face. Darwinism, huh? That's, that's oh. what it looks like, but you know, we're, gonna wrap, we're gonna do a little wrap here, and then we come right back with uh, Tima Percival Edwards, or maybe the other way around, right? But he'll tell us. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
And welcome back to VI Voices. And we have joining us right about now, Mr. Percival Tahima Edwards. Welcome. 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 Okay. welcome. I am your senatorial candidate for the 38th legislature. My name is Percival Tahima Edwards. In this time with these Virgin Islands right now, what's going through a recession, mm -hmm. meaning that in St. Croix, our unemployment is at 15%. St. Thomas is 8.2%. Mm -hmm. And the United States, with 300 million people, is 7.8%. So when you take that, in order to address that, we have to address our GDP, which is our gross domestic product. Mm -hmm. And so with this election, let's start it legislature is so serious to address what we're talking about our budgets and revenue generating measures but out of everything when before i get to revenue generating measures on my platform the first thing i want to address is our employment since you 15 percent and our closest neighbor is 40 miles away from us so what i'm taking is a CETA program this CETA program was created in the 1960s by President Johnson. It was the focus on mm -hmm. poverty coming out of the 60s with most African American coming out of the South. But it came here as a federal program and being throughout till 1983 with President Ronald Reagan at the time. He phased it out, but former Senator Studerand mm -hmm. implemented. So it's part of the VA code. So what I want to do now is take it from a comprehensive employment training act mm -hmm. to a comprehensive employment training agriculture and construction act. That's it, both on the Department of Labor, right? Yeah, yeah, and put it under the Department of Labor because right now the Department of Labor have the GD, GTPA program mm -hmm. and besides that right now they just get about $7.5 million for the closing of Hovensa. But with that program is to work with individual with the VI Next Generation Network for individual from Hovensa right. that wants to create a job and employment. Meaning that the last time the Commissioner of Labor speak, he stated that December 31st, 2012, those employees that worked at Hovensa or Turner, their deadline is December 31st, 2012 for unemployment. So if you're talking about recession now with 15% by end of December, we're looking at a depression with more of the unemployment in our community. So, but Mr. Edwards, um, no one more so than you, because you're actually immersed in the farming industry mm. and in agriculture. Next to education, agriculture within the Virgin Islands continues to be a low-hanging fruit. If people want to get elected, they kept talking, education, children are the future. Then they turn to agriculture, we need to produce more and whatnot. How do we then actually stop talking a good talk? and really start to do what we're talking about and really start to want grow our own food and make jobs through the agricultural industry. How, what sort of a plan will you put forth? To what plan I put forth is first your employment is key and so like I tell you about the CETA program now we could write in into the interior department grant that golf mm. where we get this uh, sustainable funding for programs. So the Department of Labor will have a grant resource office writing grants. Mm -hmm. So once you have your labor force coming there, you have the underprivileged, you could have those that dropped out of school that you could target, you could target those that have a diploma or say those that work in Hovensa. So your, your, your labor force is key component in anything. Then after that, we have the marketing program, which is <laughs> The 24th legislature at the time just had a marketing program, but they did not have a marketing board. So they put 250,000, and we had Mr. Stanley there at the Department of Agriculture. But we did not really have a marketing program with a board to structure how you wanted to proceed. Whatever commodities on the mm -hmm. island, meaning that, let me clear up this here, whatever commodities you have on the island, mm -hmm. you can then have it packaged and, and produced, meaning that. I put in the, in my plan also in the agenda is to utilize the industrial park, meaning in the industrial park we have about 10 building 44,000 square foot of empty space in the, those industrial buildings. If we subsidize those and we take any one of our food from mango to tambran to plum, you can make a juice, you can make a wine out of it in 21 days, 
you could make a wine, all of these different things, lime. So we could bottle these and export them as a gross domestic product once we have the labor force. Because if someone right now is making seven twenty five at minimum wage, and they was working for fifteen dollars an hour to Vensa, and they have a family to feed, bills to pay, with how our cost of living is, anybody will take the seven twenty five in this recession. Okay, Mr. Edward, right. let me cover two things. First, you mentioned that the twenty fourth legislature mark about marketing board. A yeah. marketing plan, and then the lack, and the reason why that had to move forward mm. substantially is the fact of that they don't have a marketing board. Mm. But you have the University of the Virgin Islands, mm. the Cooperative Extension Services, you have AES, and you also have the leadership. Of, yes, and you have the leadership of the Department of Agriculture. So, in lieu of that board, and you also have other advisory groups in the Virgin Islands that relate to farming. So, so in lieu of not having a marketing board, you're telling me that. They could not put together a, a sustained market market plan to move the Virgin Islands forward because to either market honey and even to do put some of those things on the table because at a time that we no longer can deal with hypotheticals and our theories, we're about do, getting it done now. How how can we get some of the things done now if we like you in the mat, um, if we like you to the 30th legislature? It's so important. What it means right now is board leadership and individual vision that is good in planning and bringing individuals together. The Department of Agriculture have a fair board that every year, the same agency you just call from ES to CS, and all of them come together for the fair three times in a year. But if you still take the, as a land grant institution, which is UVI, the Department of Labor, the Department of Agriculture, farmers and other business individuals that in interested in the cooperative effort of anything you produce meaning if you self started with bottling water whatever it is as a commodity to export to generate revenue because once you use a senator and it comes to marking up the budget the main thing is having revenue generating margins right now the rum industry is in jeopardy you all just speak about it when we're talking from captain morgan to cruise and rum. We have been exporting rum for over 200 and that is 300 years. You might tell me this generation in the 21st century, right now, the only thing we could export is rum and we bless when you watch this 84 this square miles. Good say, point, because right? I know you from very active in the St. Croix Farmers in Action and you've been a spokesperson and all of that. Yeah. What can you do differently instead of just a layperson as a senator? to help propel the farming industry, the fishing industry, you know, for farmers and persons in that category to do it in a way that will bring us income. What's lacking, especially just now the 29th legislature just come out right now, finishing up with this election. They bring down the most austerities measures and the people are the fortunate. <laughs> Mm, this <laughs> upcoming this 29th legislature he paid. What you need now if someone, Senator Malone, out here, the Committee on Agriculture and Economic, he hold one public hearing mm -hmm. when it comes to goods and service and our food industry. So what you need is planning when it comes to it is a public hearing, but still besides the public hearing, have board tongue hall meetings and hear the pulse of the people. We have the talent out there. You, know. you go to the educational complex, you go across the road to UVI, we have all those young students who write grants and contribute. But we are not using our talent. We're just building in everybody here that because of globalization that we are going into a recession. We are so blessed right now that if we're supposed to say take the oil seed industry, meaning that you have flamboyant seed, Tantan seed, you have tepid seed. When it comes to the pharmaceutical companies turning all along, whatever, in Illinois, that's the biggest pharmaceutical company. In Europe, between Hungary and Germany, they're the biggest pharmaceutical companies. Every seed that bears here when we see it raining, they is waiting for us to market it. We have we have when it comes to AT&T, we have the tech park building right now. We have um, fiber technology. So we have everything in place. But it's just a lack of leadership and planning. But can I have a question? So as a legislature, okay. I think I have the leadership to bring people together. So in, in essence, what you're saying is that all of this could fall under the Department of Agriculture and we could hire people 
from the least among us all the way to the top. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, you associate agriculture with us farming alone, the farming aspect, being in the field and doing groundwork. Mm -hmm. So maybe perhaps if you could explain that for that, as far as, as agriculture providing more jobs than just people in the field, because again, people just... Well, just like how we just stopped and the part deal with pharmaceutical, right? Right. So I guess the fall and Yeah, fall and agriculture, because you're talking about chemical engineers we need, we need an agriculture lab. 84 square miles, all these food bearings. St. Croix do not have an agriculture lab to tell you the pH, the chemical breakdown, the science of any plant or any seed. Right. We had SGS that went with the petroleum crude mm -hmm. going up there by God choose to tell you the different pH and chemical breakdown right. from petroleum crude. But none of our plant life in the field of science, we do not say for our churning. But can I and it's a great demand out there throughout the world. Can I ask a question? What, what role has the farmers played? In terms of providing leadership in this regard because yes we don't have a lot and you mentioned about we export rum but the day after do you happen 250 million yeah dollars. but did the farmers collectively start to maybe put some 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 reserves in that to benefit them or to get a lab did the farmers within the virgin islands say okay this deal is coming this deal is coming maybe we can benefit us as much as we can benefit that pro that corporation did they ask for seat at the table did they can are they lobbying to get a lab being placed here? It, yes, yes, UVA isn't providing, agriculture isn't providing, but are they lobbying to get those things done right now? When it comes to the farming organization, and especially I, as an individual following it for the past 15 years, I could tell you up to the 27 legislature, we lobbied for the Sustainable Farming Act. And with the Sustainable Farming Act, we think that would make a difference when it comes implementing everything that we work with Senator James and Senator Nelson and other senators with but nothing didn't come out of it and so what I'm trying to tell you is as much as you lobby the legislature or the executive branch to implement these legislation a program because of the lack of vision and leadership and planning that's why we're in this predicament here. Well, as you said okay. that, you know, we have issues with LIAC as well. Do you have oh, a, a you know, platform and, for and, and, and that there now is the next thing, which is, right now, when you study it now with the Hovensa agreement, remember now we're talking about three agreements. The first one signed by farmer Governor Ralph Pawanski in 1966. The second one by farmer Governor Wang Lui in 1981. And the third one with a joint agreement with farmer Roy Schneider, Governor yeah. Schneider, in 1998. So that's three agreements. Then he had 13 amendments. So with those three agreements and 13 amendments through the 46 years that Hovensa was there, we get tied in into the stock market, the Dow Jones, the rack rate. Mm -hmm. And so the time has come now that we have to diversify and see different. Right now, the custom tariff just increased when it comes to the Jones app and importing any kind of commodities with boating and marine time. So right now, what it is right now to address is our leaders then by dealing with a resolution to address to the State Department and the Interior Department to go to Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago right now is the leading giant in the region when it comes to gas or what vehicle that we drive, when it comes to diesel, when it comes to propane, when it comes to liquid fire, natural gas, they have it in abundance. Mr. Edwards, so now our up. government... Not to cut you up, but time is running out, so if you can tell us your plan. Yeah, yeah can you uh, be what, what my vision is, is to get the GRS. The GRS got the alternative investment program that mm -hmm. they just lend money to Carambola for 15 mm -hmm. million and see playing for 3.3 million dollars. We have a port authority mm -hmm. that created in 1966. You take those two agencies and let's find out where we can bring those commodities and invest in our VA government for from WAPA to all of them to invest in. So in that way, instead of having a middleman and have a hostage here, we could then know that we have Trinidad, which is right 24 hours ahead of the commodity coverage here compared from coming from the Gulf, which would take four to five days. So think you're, saying that you're, you're thinking that we should do more with the Caribbean islands? Definitely, especially Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad okay. and Tobago. I hear you, I agree with you as far as doing that, but what do you think about our status? Being an unincorporated, that wouldn't prevent us from doing trade and commerce or even import and exporting. And that's what, when it comes to public education and our political status, when it comes to the Jones Act and Maritime, 
and commodities when it comes to our cost and tariff. All those things go back to the Treaty of 1917 and the Congressional Act of 1917. So when it comes to public education and these important of commodities and our tax structure, especially gross receipt, excise tax or income tax, we said EDC's beneficiaries that need those tax that sometimes deal with Congress. All of those things fall under your political status when it comes to public education. So definitely we need to reinstate our public our political status education and have an office at even set in the lieutenant's governor that individual that just come here for a year, five years, ten years, could go and then read all these documents that governors will be talking about important commodities. Great ideas, but we're just about out of time. Oh. So you're in to wrap up thirty seconds to give well, no, okay, that was number twenty eight and the ballot. Possible Tahima Edwards to the Senate, I'm humbly asking for your support because in these beautiful Virgin Islands we call home, the time is at hand where we need individual vision and bold leadership to guide us through this recession and dropping right into a depression. So I'm asking for your support and your vote on November 6th. Peace and love, God bless. How to find your number? 277 or Tahima1 at yahoo.com, T A H E M A H 1 at yahoo.com. Okay. Is that what? Thank Best of luck in the country. Yes. Good right. luck. Yes. Good evening and welcome back to VI Voices. And we had two, well, actually one candidate tonight, I believe Mr. Julian had confirmed to be here but then he didn't show up so we proceeded with our one candidate who was uh tahima percival edwards mm -hmm. man of vision mm -hmm. what yep. do you guys think uh, well, well i was going to say definitely a man of vision, definitely a, a, a candidate to consider i really like him i like his ideas as far as the gross domestic product and the fact that um He's fully aware of the history of the Virgin Islands, and I, I've heard him before. And how we talk about the history is is very um is very um refreshing actually because you don't hear many candidates talk about that. Many candidates don't even know about that. So, and not only that, I think he's very bold, he's strong, and I could see his passion. So I like him. He's well, always been well researched, and he's always been as us for the long time that I've known him as a um, advocate for the farmers, uh, knowing his history and and the research and everything. But what I was wondering is that. We've had a lot of talk with the farming and agriculture, and like he said, it's much more expandable than just thinking about you know farming and tilling the land, etc. But um, again, it's not a priority because I guess in the times that we live in, it does not seem to be a priority. And maybe having somebody like uh, Edwards in there, Senator Edwards, um, has a nice ring to it. Maybe having somebody might maybe shift our focus. So you're saying, so you're saying it's not a, a priority with this current it's not, a, it's not a priority with this current. I mean, I've okay. heard it bantered about in the past and right. previously, but I've not seen anything come out of any of the legislatures that we can really hold on to and say this is what came out that benefited the farmers, uh, it benefited our uh, exporting of XYZ products. Uh, I mean, I just haven't seen anything tangible. But you see, my to that. one, I think farming is important. And it continues to be important because, and I think Roy Snyder put it up when he put it forth, when he advanced the argument that we need to start, when we come to our farming industries, mm -hmm. think about farming and diversifying. That farming isn't just tilling the well, soil. Well, maybe that's a good way of putting it's, it. To the it's more, decision. we have to, there's bio, there's, um, bioengineering of seeds and all of the different stuff that takes place. Even just impregnating cows and selling the embryos, all of that is part of the farming mm -hmm. product animal husbandry, livestock, livestock uh, all of that. And what we need to do is that I recognize that the farming lobby is, is, is non-existent because they are piecemeal and all over the place. And maybe they need to now start to come together and put forth an agenda. Not just have a single farmers of action agenda, not a VI farmers cooperative agenda, mm -hmm. not individual farmers agenda. They must have a, a VI farmers agenda. And he made the statement that the, the lack of marketing board. I think the lack of a marketing board, marketing board should not have hampered the, the, the development or the, the, the whole of marketing. Well, what do you think? Because I got the impression from you was neither here nor there. Let me, but, let me tell you why. And, 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 it, and I think Mr. Edwards, it was good to point that out. It just shows you that the playmakers in the farming industry are not coalescing. They're not coming together. UVI, 
via the Department of Agriculture, USDA. They're not sitting down at the table and coming up with a, and the farmers. Don't forget the farmers. The farmers. They're not coming up and developing a whole a, a wholesome a plan to plan to advance the industry. Now, I would have loved Mr. Mr. Edwards to be all and then we could have discussed some of the things he's doing at um, at Estate Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Because oh, some yeah. of those things are oh, yeah. very are very good. But at times we need to now put all of that together and see how we can tie it in to everything, to our tourism product. To, um, to, um, to a local well, school. Well, if you stayed out there, I had the opportunity to actually go out here to Bethlehem Red Cross mm. and the National Guard, and uh, actually he gave me a tour mm -hmm. of the grounds, and, and, and some of the rooms and everything are still there. It's very, very historical. But I think there was talk about like ecotourism, you know, incorporating that in there. Uh, there was so much, it was so rich. It really, really, really impressed me. And, but we haven't really done anything I, to, you know, you to, like you said, the piecemeal, but there's potential there. There, there, there is potential, potential there. Yeah, of course, you made, you, made, you made a point about the, um, the different agencies that are coming together and because that's, that's because the leaders, the leaders of the community are not placing emphasis on the agriculture um, industry. But I believe because of what's happening currently, that they're going to have to do something because of, of, of our, yeah, our energy yeah, issue. Yeah. Right. You're right. All of that you got to we don't have a choice, but my thing about it, where's the urgency? To yeah. provide leadership, the urgency and, and, is right and, now. And the urgency coming, the urgency is gonna be here because people are gonna be starving directly. That's uh, my point. You're right, but, but let me give it. Mr. Edwards says something about rum. Fact, we produce rum, start. and but the thing about it is, one of the things I told Mr. Edwards way some time back is that when they were crafting the Azure deal, mm -hmm. they should have compelled the government to write in that one percent of the molasses that's gonna be used by the plant mm -hmm. is produced locally in the Virgin Islands. One percent. Right. How much? The, how much do they spend on molasses? Now, what would that have done? They would have created a subsidized industry, mm -hmm. fuel that probably would have hired more people than the actual. Yeah, Number two, what about creating a, a boutique rum industry, a micro rum brewery, and call it Estate Bethlehem Rum, mm -hmm. and sell those bottles at two hundred and fifty dollars per pack? Because and we people do not, will buy them. people yeah, will buy them. Will buy and them. what do you say? It's locally produced, mm -hmm. bottled here handcrafted those are the things you put on and so my thing is you know what that's so excellent because you could give them an actually guided tour of, of a small rum, rum microbrewery sure. right on a state sure. bethlehem or someplace on island and you get it done and imagine you probably employed five to ten people or maybe maybe even close to 25 because you need bottlers people to move the product around all that stuff and you create another handmade here that goes out and those empty ships when they leave here so my thing is, it's time that we start talking about yeah. agriculture and put it and, and put and put it down now. And you know what? I'm, and I'm, stop waiting. I'm, I'm on board with that because there's so much potential there. And for some reason, we haven't tapped into it and we haven't really paid close attention the way we should. But I think that if in this 30th legislature we get in a couple people like Edwards, who has who are like-minded, who has that on their agenda on the forefront, I think we could really really Come. make some changes and. Revenue generation. Correct. And sometimes we don't need to wait for grant monies to get this done. We can sneak it into some of these Stop. legislation. That's right. If That's right. I mean, we these give away some, deals. yes, yep. cruise and rum. Sure. Why sure. couldn't cruise and rum sure. and Diazio help assist them in the starting a microbrewery? Sure. Because it's not going to take away from the customers that cruise and rum and Diazio are but developing. It's given back to the community for all of the benefits that you've gotten on the so, so the you could we do. need to say that I encourage Mr. Edward, I hope he's successful, but I encourage when he makes the that to strengthen sure. his farming lobby. Get them ready and come up with a, co a coherent plan, a comprehensive plan. How are we, within a matter of a year or two, going to make sure we are producers mm -hmm. than sole consumers, consumers in the Virgin Islands? Exactly. That's a good point. And, and, and that way. But I think Mr. Edward offered a good look us to look at what we should be looking at. Remember, we were talking about diversity right. and the kind of candidates we should be right. looking at. And I'm glad we came back to that because part of what we do here at VI Voices is we want to enlighten the uh, voting populace so that you know you know more or less, you have a pretty good idea as to why you're voting, who you're voting for, and why you're voting for that person. So it's not just about a popularity. <laughs> and the reason why that's so important is because that makeup of who we end up selecting in the long run is who we have to live with and hope that they do the best by us. So again, let's go back to our checklist in terms of what we think to help our viewers, particularly here in the, in the territory of the Virgin Islands, and going to the, first of all, you gotta go to the polls, you gotta vote,
but just helping to streamline what we're doing here when VI Voices, when we have this election, you know. Rocky Voice. Rock, rock Rocky Voice. Voice. Going on, right? Yes. So we really want to pump it up and we really want to tell you why we think it's so important. But what I do want to see, what will really, really warm my heart, guys, is when I see a diversification. The 30th legislature may be a very good place to start. A diversification in there. And when I say diversification, I'm talking about the qualities of what people are bringing to the table in terms of what they can do. So, you know, at the end of the day, guys, we have to narrow it down as to what we're looking for in terms of leadership. Mm -hmm. What and, do you think? and you're right, we have to look at what we're looking for in our leaders because it's very essential. And leadership is rather diverse. And, and we know that leadership is this positional leadership and there's, uh, uh, and there's direct leadership. Sometimes we know based on your position, uh, based on the event at that particular time, it may require a different type of leader. That you may give up your leadership role and follow the rest of the majority. And, at, and that's where it comes in that at times you don't need it doesn't need for it to, it to be your idea yeah. for you to follow sure. it's another wonderful idea that you can buy into and say yes it benefits the virgin island people do you have the characteristic mm -hmm. that's something i'm going to be looking for yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the problems with that though is that sometimes that may be the case but because of the structure that we have there there's a blockage of those ideas if you don't want that idea to be birthed forward they block you so even though you may have good intentions and maybe want to join forces with persons who have a good idea or you know so you think that at some point at some point they're gonna have to address the yeah, we're gonna structure have, we're gonna have to look deal with the structure of the legislature so. but because those pieces of legislation and some of them never see the the light of day but you see then it comes from again then let's go back to positional leadership mm -hmm. then the president the minority leader, leader and majority leader, they need to start to lead. They need to put their positions to bear and tell their membership, no, the Virgin Islands people did not expect us to go there and pull a legislation mm -hmm. in a back room and call right. it preemption. But isn't that things like that need to come to the forefront, bring it to the people? Bring it to the people. Don't but, know? but you see, the minority leader, it may benefit them. The majority leader may benefit them because they don't have to face the tough issues. And that's where our leaders shy away from in the Virgin Islands. The tough issues, they don't deal with it. Yeah. You can't run away. As a matter of fact, you've got to look at the people who are up, notably absent when it comes to Thank you. Critical, critical Thank you. issues. And we know... That's key. And, and think about it. We have had some critical votes over time. Yes. How can you not be in the Virgin Islands shows when you're cutting it? Exactly. Look at eight percent of the right. people speak. That's right. You have to. We have to pay close attention and, and, to those things. And that's where we're talking about. So think about that. And we have to make sure that yes, you may sound good on the radio. You may have a nice write up a nice piece in the newspaper, mm -hmm. but you know that is just for show. Right. Is they don't have our people at heart. The only thing you're thinking about is the eighty-five thousand yeah. dollars and staying in office, or the eighty-five thousand dollars when you come into office. Mm -hmm. Good point. That's, that's the best way I can phrase it. You know, one of the other things that concerns me too is this minority and majority caucusing. <laughs> that's the first thing they run and do when they get in there. They have the little secret meeting in the hotel rooms and they start and they draw the line down the middle. The haves and the have nots. And that's beneficial to St. Thomas. You think so? I know, so you can see it. I can't see it. I mean, I, just, I see it every day. I live it. I'm experiencing it right now. I, I understand boys' skepticism. I am not going to dismiss that at times one district may benefit over the other. Yeah. But I want to tell what, what I tell who doesn't benefit the people. But remember now, it's, it's, it's not a, you're not a, they're senators of the Virgin Islands. Of course, they're the senators of the Virgin Islands, but we have two different districts. Because again, of the structure, the structure mm -hmm. you just spoke about. So who? Which leader that you talking about don't bring that to the program and address the structure of the world? But how many of them even aware of the fact that they had a structure prior to what they have now? I, I, I don't know. You're right. Some of them may not know about the prior structure before this organization that, that yeah. led to um, what the present legislation yes. that we do have now. But you see, the challenge is when they caucus, I mean, there's nothing wrong with people meeting and discussing sure. issues and sure. say, this is the line we're going to take and direction we're going to take the body or a particular issue right. on. But what does it boil down to? At times it boils down to the special lobby and the special interest in the Virgin Island. We may not, we need to admit it, there's a special interest in the Virgin Island and at times the deal making and these a, a, a backdoor meetings benefit those persons and those corporations. And we don't see meaningful legislation, and this 29th, Definitely. The only meaningful legislation they have put forward 
is the VSAB, mm -hmm. cutting the people's thing by 8%. And then, just right as part of this election cycle, the bills came down from government house, and what did they do? Table them. They didn't say, let's put them on the, on the um, put them, let's vote on them and vote all of them down. No, let's staple them, let's strategic. defer them. They were strategic, strategic. Always. Strategically deferred. Strategically but, bene to benefit them and not to hamper the election chances. What about benefiting the people? What about being fair to the people? This all boils down to the same thing we've been talking about for weeks now. As far as government addressing the, the needs and the issues of the small people. Historically speaking, government has never done that. Government is our for cooperation. We got to understand that this system of government that we have, even though it's necessary, it's not our own. We need to put people in there who understand that, who know that, who have the character and the passion like what we've been talking about all night. They're going to go and address the issues of the man, the common man, the common people. And until we put people like that in there, in my opinion, I don't mean to sound like a pessimist, but I'm not going to change. Yeah, well, let's not be pessimists. Let's be optimistic about it. We got the rocky, rocky, rocky voice. voice. Rocky voice only. younger people out there voting, registering to vote, and if you haven't already, you need to do that. But I think we need, we're in this for the long run, guys. We're hoping that we get some short-term fixes with, you know, some people, new people, hopefully, that gets in there, LIAC and all of that, but in the long run, we all in this together. So, let your voice be heard, rock your vote, and thanks for watching VI Voices, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you.